Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Please excuse the way I look. This is the face of the stomach flu. Anyways, when posting the last video about the tools I use to manage our trucking companies, I never thought I would get so much outreach from you guys about Airtable. Now I've received a ton of emails from you guys asking me to share my template with you. But unfortunately, because I'm a moron when it comes to technology, I have absolutely no idea how to make a shareable template on that system. However, I don't like letting anyone down. So I decided to make this video where I will walk you through how to build the same template that I have. So today we're going to be building it together. Ready? Let's go. All right. So let's dive right in. So before we start building anything, I want to again show you my load management system right here. So this is what it looks like. Uh, I have my dates, the load status, shippers, receivers, brokers, rate confirmations, uh, commodities, etc., etc. And of course here I can choose the load status, whether it was booked, whether uh, the driver is at pickup and transit at delivery, whether the paperwork was sent, which means that I already invoiced the broker, or whether it was a truck order not used. So this is how I built it, and I am going to basically replicate this system with you guys so you can follow along whenever you're ready to build your Airtable. So let's get started. Okay, so when you start with Airtable, you won't have all these things right here. You will only have an add a base sign like this. So what you will do is you'll click the plus sign and then you will title it right here. So let's title it uh, my loads and you can choose what kind of color you want it to be. You can choose a symbol. Um, there are a ton of symbols to choose from. So let's say let's put a star. Perfect. And then you are ready to get started. So we'll close this for a second right here. The first thing I did was I changed this first column right here to date. So what you want to do is you want to click this arrow, customize field type, and then right here, choose date. And we will put here date booked, save. That's it. Now the next column I have is the delivery date. So I will click the arrow, customize field type, click date again, and then I will choose date delivered. Now here we are actually going to delete this field and we're going to delete this field for now. So let's just start with date booked and date delivered. Now this table one, we're going to rename to loads. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to add or import. Click here and click create an empty table. So let's name this table drivers. And let's say you have two drivers, Bob Smith and let's say Jason Smith because we're so creative. Now in my case, what I also have under the drivers tab is the hire date. So you can do that. You customize the field type, you choose date. And then you enter in right here, hire date, that will be your template. And let's say that Bob Smith was hired on, I don't know, let's say November 1st. The next thing I have in my table is I have a field called equipment. And what I do here is I do a single line text and I will put in, let's say 2018 Freightliner. 2018 Freightliner. Um, you can also put it by VIN number just to keep all of the information about your drivers in one place. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add another tab. So click right here and create an empty table. And we're going to name this table Shippers and receivers. Why did I just misspell it? Now the shippers and receivers tab is probably one of the best tabs I have in all of my Airtable because it allows me to track different shippers and receivers and to reference them in the future to see what to expect from these shippers and receivers if we're ever picking up or delivering a load from them. So first I have the name. So here I'll put the name of the facility. Let's say it's Americold. That's the first one. The second one, let's say it's Fred Meyer. Uh, the third one, let's say it's, I don't know, um, Nestle. 
something like that. Whoops, Nestle. <laughs> now, the second column right here, I have it sorted by type. Is it a shipper or is it a receiver? Or maybe it's both. Sometimes shippers can be receivers and receivers can be shippers. So what you can do here is you click this arrow, you customize the field type, and you click single select. So click right here, we'll name it type, and then you can add options. For example, option one, we will make it dark blue. That's a shipper. Option two, we will make it dark green. That's a receiver. And then option three, which we'll make red, we'll say shipper or receiver. And you save. There we go. Next, right here, I customize the field type by putting in a single line text and I will put in the address. And this is the address of the shipper or receiver. Next, I have in this column timing. So you will click this button right here, customize field type, and then you will put in timing. And for the options, it's already a single select, which is what we want. For the options, you will delete these right here. You will add an option, and the way I have it is, for example, in green, I will have less than an hour. No, less than one hour, there we go. This is if it takes less than one hour to get loaded or unloaded. Then I have uh, in yellow, let's say, less than two hours. This for me means that it's between one hour and two hours. Then I have in orange two, three hours. Then I have, let's make it purple, uh, three to five hours. And then I know that I have over five hours. And I save. Now this popped up, so I'm going to say don't bother me again and convert. Then what I have, and I'll add a column right here, is single select and I name it rating, and this is my personal rating of the shipper or receiver. So in green, I have good. In yellow, I have okay. In red, I have bad. And in purple, I have do not use. Yes, there are some shippers and receivers I rate as do not use. Next column I have is a long text right here. And this is because this is where I leave any notes about the shippers or receivers. And I make it a long text right here. So that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. And the great part is uh, we'll actually delete these three names. So let's say that uh, you get the rate confirmation and you are going to pick up at Fred Meyer. Uh, and the address is, I don't know, 1800 Southwest Street in Pileup, Washington, zip code 12345. Um, we're going to make the address a little bit bigger. There we go. Now, this is the shipper. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here. I'll select shipper. Perfect. Now, let's say that this shipper loaded me within one hour. I'm going to click right here less than one hour, rating is of course good, and I'll put in loaded within one hour, great place, lots of parking, let's say. Now, let's say you're delivering to Kroger, uh, and this Kroger is somewhere in, I don't know, we'll put 123 Main Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 12345. This is the address. Now, this is the receiver. Now, we click receiver here, and let's say that this receiver took eight hours to unload past appointments. So we will click over five hours and I would click do not use. And then add right in, took over eight hours past appointment time to unload, terrible place, rude people. Yes, this happens all the time. I'm sure you know that. Okay, so now that you got a hang of the shippers and receivers, let's add another tab and we're gonna call it brokers. Now the way I have it with the brokers is I have the name of the broker, then the second column is a single select column, 
and it's called rating. And this is where I rate the brokers. Now I realized I put single line text. In reality, it's single select. There we go. So for example, I can say good broker right here. Uh, then we can say, okay, we'll make it in yellow and then bad which is going to be in red. Okay, perfect, that's the rating. And that's pretty much it. Everything else I delete. You just click the arrow and delete. This is all I have. So for example, I will put TQL in here and I'll rate them okay. I'll put an Uber here and I'll rate them good because they pay really quickly. <laughs> then I have JB Hunt, which I love. They're a great broker in my opinion and I'll rate them good. Uh, so there we go. We have this. So now what I want to show you is we're going to go back to the loads tab. Okay, so we started with the loads tab and this is all we have built. So let's continue building. The next column I have is a link to the driver records right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this plus button and I'm going to say link to another record and I'm going to choose drivers and this column will be called driver. So this way you know which driver actually picked up and delivered the load. Then I have my favorite column which is a single select column and it's called load status. And we can add options for example booked, then we can have an option at pickup, then we can have an option in transit, then at delivery, invoice maybe, this is a better way to name it, and uh, Tonu, let's do that, create field. So that's the load status. Then I have a field linked to the shippers and receivers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the plus button and link to another record called shippers and receivers. And that is what I'll name this column as well. There we go, create field. Then I have another linked column to the broker. So I will click the plus sign link to another record. This time I'm going to choose brokers and I will call it broker, create field. Then I have a column where I attach the rate confirmation. So click the plus sign and you can actually choose attachment right here. So when you click attachment and you can put in rate con, create the field and here you'll be able to drop in the files. You can actually drop in your rate confirmation so it's all in one place linked to the load that you are doing, which is awesome. Now I also have a field, it's a single line text and it's called load number, which is the number I get from the rate confirmation. Now this helps me stay organized just in case a broker calls later on down the line and says, hey, you did this load number with us. I need this in this document. I can search it within the table really, really easily. Uh, then I have another single line text, which is called commodity. And this is where I put in what we were hauling. Uh, then we have load rate, of course, which is super important. So you'll click the add field sign and then you'll click in currency right here, currency, and you can choose the precision right here. Now I keep it at two decimal places and I call it load rate. Pretty simple. Now I also have another currency column, uh, which I call additional compensation. And this is for any detention, accessorials, uh, tonu, etc., so on and so forth. Now to calculate these two together for invoicing load rate plus additional compensation, what I need to do is create a formula. So to do that, I will click the plus sign and then I'll click formula right here. You click it here and then you want to click in this uh, box and you will do load rate plus any additional compensation. Now formatting, don't forget formatting. We want it to be currency. So click currency and create the field. So basically this uh, field right here, this column will calculate the load rate plus the additional compensation. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename this field to total due. Perfect. So now let's try to fill it out. So let's say you booked a load uh, on the 1st of February that delivers on the 3rd of February. You click here, the plus sign, and you can choose the driver that you already put into the driver's tab. See, this is the great thing about Airtable. 
So let's say that Bob Smith was the driver and the load status uh, is booked. Now the shipper we have, let's say Fred Meyer is the shipper and the receiver is Kroger. And this populates from the shippers and receivers tab, which is awesome. Now the broker, let's say it was Uber. Great, Uber. We would post the rate con here. You can literally drag and drop the file or you can click plus and search your computer to add an attachment. Let's say it's load number one, two, three, four, five, six. Commodity, let's say paper rolls. Okay, now watch this. The load rate, let's say was, I don't know, uh, $3,000. Excellent. See, it auto populates $3,000. It sometimes takes a minute, that's true. Now let's say you also accrued um, $60 in detention pay. See, it will auto populate right here and show you that it's now $3,060 due. Now, if you're managing Bob Smith, what you would do once he arrives to the shipper, you would say he's at pickup. Once he arrives to the delivery, you say he's at delivery. Once the broker is invoiced, you click invoiced and you're done. So this is how I built out my loads. Now I also have a payments tab and so many other tabs as well, but I'm not going to get into them in this video. If you guys enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, please let me know and I'm happy to make other tutorials to build out a full transportation management system using Airtable. But again, I'm just following your lead, so let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video.